severe pain, like the worst back pain that I've ever felt in my entire life. What was hard was watching him in all the pain because honestly it was tormenting, like his screams, his yells. She ends up picking me up in the car and I had to get in the trunk because I couldn't sit properly either. I couldn't sit straight. And so I was kind of just crooked and all messed up. He couldn't walk. He couldn't sit by himself. He couldn't do anything that you take for granted. He couldn't get dressed. He couldn't use the bathroom. So I scheduled a emergency chiropractic appointment or whatever. I was in the RV just hanging out and I was messing with some of my film equipment and I noticed that I had this pain in my lower back and I didn't think anything of it at first, but literally 30 minutes later, we're in the house that's nearby, the RV, and all of a sudden it's just excruciating, like severe pain, like the worst back pain that I've ever felt in my entire life. And this title of this video is no joke. I was literally unable to walk for several days and I was crawling everywhere. I couldn't stand up on my own two feet and Gabby had to, you know, stick with me through it all, helping me get off the couch, helping me go to the bathroom and stuff. It was actually very humbling because in the moment I was just really angry. I'm like, why is this happen happening to me? God, why can't you just heal me and take away all the pain? And I was just angry, angry, angry. But then I realized like God used this for so many reasons. And so this pain was going on for several days. That first day was absolutely terrible. I remember we were in the house and the RV's kind of near the house, like walking distance, it doesn't take that long to get there. But when you're not able to walk, it feels like a long time. And so I had to get back to the RV, but I was unable to walk. And so I decided I'm gonna crawl my way back to the RV. And Gabby was there to support me. And it was just terrible. It was like, I, if I was watching like, in another person's perspective, it, it was traumatizing, like the, the pain and like I was screaming and crying out to the Lord. I'm like, it was so bad. And so I couldn't make it to the RV. She ends up picking me up in the car and I had to get in the trunk because I couldn't sit properly either. I couldn't sit straight. And so I was kind of just crooked and all messed up. And she carries me in the RV and it was just, it showed me a new perspective on love, especially in my marriage. Like I never seen my wife help me in this way yet because nothing like this ever happened to me. And so one of the things, and it's very, you know, personal, but I got to tell you because it's the testimony is like my wife literally had to help me use the bathroom. Like I literally couldn't go number one and two by myself. I couldn't bend. So, you know, she had to help me with that. And the fact that she was so like comfortable and okay with that was, it was just beautiful to see. It was beautiful to see that I couldn't do it on my own. And it's like the same thing with the Lord. Sometimes we need to humble ourselves and realize that we need help. And I was like, I was very prideful at first. I was like, no, I don't want you helping me with this. This is weird. Like I don't, I can't have my wife help me go number two. That's so weird. And, but she did and it was beautiful. And so she helped me with so many other things that I couldn't do. Like I couldn't get off the couch myself. I couldn't get out of bed myself. I couldn't just do certain things that people typically do. I, I literally lost my ability to walk. It's the craziest thing ever. And so and the next night comes and I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm starting to walk a little bit again, but I still need help. But that night came and it was, it was the worst night of my entire life. Gabby and I got maybe one or two hours of sleep that night. I remember I kept trying to get in bed and what would happen is my back would lock up. Like it would literally feel like somebody started stabbing me as crazy as it sounds. And we were just crying that night. And my wife was crying because she realized how much pain I was in. Like this was no joke. I was in severe pain. And the beautiful thing about this is we were, we were standing in faith. We kept praying and praying and praying, believing for healing. And I wasn't getting it. I wasn't getting that healing and I kept getting upset. But at the same time, I was trying to stay joyful because, you know, we're supposed to rejoice in our sufferings. And I felt like I was suffering. And so anyways, um, the next day comes and, you know, 
I just didn't know what to do anymore. I wasn't going to a hospital. Like, there was no way I was going to a hospital. Like, that's the last thing I would ever do. I'm going to stand in faith before I ever go to a hospital. And so anyways, I remember we kind of assumed, oh, maybe it's a slip disc in my back. Like, maybe my disc slipped out of place or whatever. I don't know. And uh, so I scheduled a emergency chiropractic appointment or whatever. And so I go and the guy basically tells me like you have a level two or level three sprain. And then he also said I had a strain. So I had two different things, which is confusing, but I didn't realize how bad it was. And basically I had to, like I was, I can't work for two weeks or whatever. And so financially that's, you know, that was a little scary for me. And now I've just been resting. But the reason why I wanted to share this is there were so many things that I learned. Like it taught me to be more still. I literally couldn't do anything. It taught me how beautiful my marriage was to see my wife take care of me in such a way. Spiritually, it literally put me on my knees before the Lord like I couldn't walk. And the, all before this happened, by the way, like before this whole experience happened, I remember saying to my parents, like nothing truly bad has ever happened to me. I, I haven't experienced such a thing that makes me cry out to the Lord. Man, this made me cry out to the Lord so much. Like I kept begging him and begging him and begging him. And so it just taught me a lot. And uh, it was a really beautiful testimony. I'm still being healed right now, even sitting. Like there's still some pain and stuff. But I know the Lord, even though I didn't get complete healing, I knew that he relieved a lot of the pain. Going to the chiropractor, you know, that could even have been the Lord because the chiropractor relieved so much pain. I went from a 10 to like a 6 or a 5, I don't know. But it definitely went down in pain level. So um, such a beautiful testimony. So honestly, there's a lot to be learned throughout this whole thing. You know, Dylan ran through it already, but, you know, out of nowhere, he injured his back. And a lot of us just kind of thought, like us in the house, that, he was exaggerating and being dramatic because again, like there was nothing that had happened to cause this. It was just all of a sudden he was in excruciating pain to the point that he literally couldn't walk. And so I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't understand the reasoning. I was confused, but I realized I needed to help him obviously because he couldn't do anything. And so on day one, I was just kind of like sitting around, like kind of asking the Lord, what's, what's going on here? And Dylan literally spent the whole day, I think it started in the afternoon, like actually no, I think it started at noon time, literally laying on his stomach and then like sitting on the couch. And we were icing him here and there. I didn't really know much about all of this and I didn't know what it was to treat it. And he wasn't sitting in the best posture at that point. But we were just like really all confused. And of course we were praying, but we weren't like super pressing in yet. Because we thought, oh, maybe it's something that's just going to pass. Or at least that's what I was thinking in my mind. I'm like, okay, maybe he just twisted it. Tomorrow it's going to be gone. And so I didn't really think much of it, even though he was in a lot of pain. And so the second day comes, and it's just way worse. I'm starting to see that this isn't something he's exaggerating about. I'm starting to see that this is actually, like, crucial. Like, whatever he's walking through is, is really hurting him. And so in my mind, I wasn't getting worried because I knew the Lord had it, but I was just asking the Lord. I'm like, okay, Lord, what is this? Like, what's happening? And so I was just doing my best to help him and, like, serve him because he, he literally couldn't do anything again. Like, he couldn't walk. He couldn't sit by himself. He couldn't do anything that you take for granted. He couldn't get dressed. He couldn't use the bathroom. And so for me, like, I mean, it was humbling because I had to do literally everything. But at the same time, that wasn't the hard part for me. I didn't mind helping him get dressed or like putting on his socks and you know if I'm doing something and then I have to run and help him that wasn't hard. What was hard was watching him in all the pain because honestly it was tormenting like his screams, his yells, his aches every time he would move like the slightest bit of movement was just terrible and I'm just like oh no and I didn't know how to help you know and so we were really just praying and praying and we actually had a beautiful time of prayer earlier that day. Um, he was in pain and so his mom was laying hands on him, I was laying hands on him and then Scott came and laid hands on him. We're all just praying over various things, not just the pain but about deeper deeper things and then they were praying over our marriage and I literally felt like Jesus, I mean I know Jesus is always with us and he lives within us and we're two or three gathered there, he is in the midst. I felt like in that moment that Jesus was literally standing there, like I felt this presence in this light 
And so that was so, so encouraging. But then we go back to the RV and like he was actually like walking there with me. Like I was helping him walk. So I'm like, oh, praise God, it's getting better now. I thought this is it. But we get there and it was just way worse. Like 10 times, 100 times worse. I don't even know. But, you know, he went to lay down. We went to go to bed and literally all night he was just crying in pain. He was screaming in pain. And it was just extremely hard. Like I was feeling very discouraged, but I knew that God had to show up. Like nothing could change my mind on that. I was just like, God, I know you're here. So why aren't you doing anything right now? And I was just, I was really questioning like what's happening? Like, how can we fix this? And we just went through a line of things like we were commanding the pain to go and then we were calling out certain things and then he was repenting, I was repenting, we were crying together, which was a, actually a special moment. And just going through the list of things, trying to figure it out. And it was really good because like the Lord changed his attitude about the whole thing. Cause at first he was angry and upset. And then he just got to this point of realizing, well, he can't be angry at God because God knows best. And whatever this is, like, it's not on God. Like God is doing something beautiful. And so it was really, really hard. That was honestly the worst night for me personally was to experience this. I felt tormented just watching the whole thing. And again, yeah, I just, I broke down and I wanted to break down all throughout the night, but it wasn't until this very moment that I'm like, okay, I just, I, I can't do this either. Like, Lord, this is making me weak, like watching this and experiencing this. And so the next day happens, we don't really sleep. We might've dozed off for like an hour or two, but it wasn't in the bed, it was on the couch so he could actually sit up straight. And Dylan was still crying out. We were trying to stretch him out on the floor. We were trying to do whatever we could do for him. And it wasn't helping. And so we went to the chiropractor and I, we just prayed. I said, okay, God, if you're gonna bless this chiropractor and use this person to bring relief to Dylan, then have there be an appointment. And there was, immediately we got in. And so that was definitely a blessing. And so we went there, Dylan got relief. They gave him a diagnosis that it was supposed to, it's supposed to take six to eight weeks to heal. Um, but we're not believing that. We're believing it's going to be faster. And I'm already seeing that because even the change in Dylan so far has been, has been way quicker. And a lot of the pain is gone and he's able to sit. He's able to sleep now. He's able to walk now. And it, it's just a lot easier. He's not a hundred percent there yet, but we know God's using this and God's God actually used it even for our marriage to bring us closer because we both had to be humble. You know, he had to be humble to receive my help. I had to be humble to help him. And so it's been beautiful. And I know God's still working things out and he's still going to teach us. And honestly, like, I don't understand everything. I, I, know, I know healing isn't always immediate by any means. I feel like more often than not, it takes time. And it's just something we have to endure and have faith without seeing. And so I don't understand every part of it. But I know God's in the midst and I know he's going to use this. And so that's my perspective.